How was Mark Steele transformed from Gateshead's village idiot, famous only for shooting a teenage girl in the face, to what he is today, Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist? Well, the answer is one man and one film. Sasha Stone directed a film called 5G Apocalypse, The Extinction Event. And this is the film, this work of media, cemented Mark Steele's role as uh, the whistleblower, the inventor, and the weapon specialist he claims to be. And today we are going to be reviewing that film. Sit yourself comfortably down, acquire a tasty beverage, and prepare to feast your eyes on one of the most bizarre works of conspiracism ever to have been committed to celluloid. It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs. Even before the opening credits have finished rolling, we have this bizarrely sensational claim that 5G networks will cook our eyeballs like eggs. And really, that sets the scene for the rest of the film. It's a clotted mess of paranoid conspiracies, wide-eyed weirdos pretending to be experts. And of course, the featured expert in this film is none other than the very, very expert Mark Steele himself. This film is about him. And as the film starts to roll proper, we get a lovely introduction from Britain's most famous conspiracy theorist, that's David Icke, who's going to introduce the subject of this movie. In uh, Britain, in a place in the uh, north of England called Gateshead, uh, a scientist there called Mark Steele has been warning people of LED streetlights, which he says are emitting 5G. David Icke and Sasha Stone seem to be completely convinced that Mark Steele is what he claims to be. And so the film now follows Mark Steele as he patrols the streets of Gateshead, intercepting a bunch of council workers who are upgrading the streetlights. And, and you can just look at their entirely befuddled faces uh, as they see the pink-faced man confront them about their basic job of installing street lighting. Oh, gee. Right, we're away, what's the crack? Hey, lads. I'm just having a word with these gates at Council Workers about replacing this, uh, this, these transmitters on these lights that are causing harm and uh, assault in the community. This is Sasha Stone is a classic enabler. He, he's taking all of Mark Steele's bad behaviour and encouraging it. In this case, we can see that Mark Steele was harassing those befuddled looking council workers. Sasha Stone believes that Mark Steele is engaged in some kind of civil liberties confrontation. And this pattern is, is repeated throughout the entire film. The, the wheels have now been set in motion, and everything that Mark Steele does or says is taken with the same lack of critical awareness. Take, for example, this speech that he delivered before the far-right Democrats and Veterans Party. They were a short-lived spin-off of the UK Independence Party, UKIP, and they seem to be absolutely lapping up all of Mark Steele's ridiculous lies about what he claims to know about 5G, and more importantly, who he is. Mark Steele's credentials are entirely fictitious. He is not at all what he claims to be. I have to tell people 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapons systems head up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. As with everything Mark Steele claims about himself, it's entirely made up. Mark Steele is not one of the world's leading experts in head-up displays. He has zero credentials in this subject. There are none that he has ever offered. His highest academic qualification is a degree in psychology that he obtained whilst he was a prisoner, serving time for having shot a young teenager in the face. But that doesn't stop Mark Steele attempting to pontificate on a wide range of subjects that he clearly knows absolutely nothing about. Here's Mark trying to explain the difference between the, the various generations of phone system. The G stands for generation. So you started off with the first uh, transmitter system. Back in the 1980s. In the 80s, yes. Yeah, so you had 1G, then you had 2G. We've at least established that Mark can count to two. And as the generations moved on, you started to see uh, 
more uh, complex uh, signal systems, uh, cleverer uh, pieces of uh, you know antenna designs, etc., etc. So the you can always tell when Mark Steele is trying to filibuster because he uses the vaguely Latinate phrase etc. etc. But the, the fact that he can't actually name any specific technologies of 5G, the things that make 5G different from the previous generations of phone system, well, to a more critically minded director, that would be a warning sign that Sasha Stone's expert was himself a fool. But Sasha is a man on a mission. He wants to prove just as badly as Mark does that 5G is a deadly killer weapon. And he is happy to overlook any amount of bumbling and stumbling by his expert witness. So the whole thing became uh, more data, quicker data, quicker downloads, etc, etc. I think it's obvious that anybody with the smallest amount of critical ability that Mark Steele is waffling. But Sasha Stone doesn't notice, or at least doesn't care, because this film isn't about explaining anything or revealing any truths. It's about making people afraid. However, 5G is something completely different. And in order to convince people that 5G is something completely different, Sasha Stone makes use of some of Mark Steele's own recordings, such as the ridiculous video he made attempting to tear down and explain what the components of a stone and lamppost circuit are. It's a profoundly absurd video, which I reviewed way back in episode four of Mind of Steel. All right, let's get a break though. Let's tell the people what this really is. This is the 5G transmission device. That's a hell of a beast that, isn't it? Sasha Stone is clearly aware though that he's not going to be able to build a film solely around Mark Steele's testimony, which is why for the middle segment of the film, he includes a lot of fake experts, people like this chap. His name is Thomas Joseph Brown, and he is a fellow of New Earth University. And if you've never heard of that institution, well, that's because it's a fake university founded by Sasha Stone himself. Thomas Joseph Brown is the director of the science faculty of that esteemed academic institution. Now, when we look at 5G, 60 gigahertz. 60 gigahertz is the frequency of oxygen molecule absorption. What we breathe is actually O2, pair of oxygen. So being bombarded with 60 gigahertz could very well impair our oxygen absorption rate in our body and thereby the whole basis of our living system. It sounds absolutely terrifying. 60 gigahertz, a frequency band that isn't actually used in any of the 5G specifications. Well, nevertheless, it has the potential to destroy all the oxygen in our atmosphere and therefore end life as we understand it. Can anyone up a claim like that? Well, uh, yes, because believe it or not, Thomas Joseph Brown is not the most absurd expert that Sasha Stone chose to include in this video. What about Dr. Marco Ruggerio? He is the conspiracy theorist's conspiracy theorist. And, and, and just cop an eyeful of this utter nonsense. You have to consider that DNA also works as a fractal antenna, which is able to send and receive signals. They may somehow interfere with the ability of DNA to retain and transmit biological signals. So this is... Marco Ruggerio is an actual medical doctor, but perhaps one of the quackiest, wildest doctors you'll ever encounter in all of the history of medicine. But you can see a greater pattern. Did you notice that paper that was flashed on the screen as he was talking? It's some abstruse academic research claiming that the DNA molecule has the potential to act as an antenna, probably a completely inconsequential finding that has been taken, magnified out of all consequence, and then twisted to mean something completely absurd by a, a medical doctor with a wide-eyed agenda. And, and you can see Sasha Stone do that a few scenes later. Here is the expert at work. 
But given that human DNA is less than 1% of the cellular DNA in the human body, the rest of the cellular DNA is microbial, and we know that this will eviscerate microbial DNA. So we're talking about a takedown of the operating system of human beings. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. And for once, Mark is telling the truth, because he really couldn't have put it anywhere near as eloquently as Sasha Stone. Mark is just not a skilled bullshitter, like Sasha Stone clearly is. You can see that expression of blind terror on Mark Steele's face. What is he going to say next? How do you respond to, to something as zany as what Sasha Stone has just said? But fortunately, Sasha Stone isn't really looking for Mark to say anything clever, because this is just as much the Sasha Stone show as it is the Mark show. Every single thing that Sasha Stone makes is really a vehicle for his own ego. And just because this is a documentary about Mark Steele doesn't stop that from being true. So the connection between chemtrails and 5G? It's all interconnected. Uh, the metalized particulates, they can identify you in your own home 20 hours a day, seven days a week. For the last... These metalized particulates, uh, as Mark Steele likes to refer to them, well, they sound like an improved version of an Apple AirTag. They can locate literally anybody anywhere on the planet, which sounds like an incredible technology. Why on earth did Apple go to the bother of inventing an AirTag? Why bother give it batteries, circuits, antenna, uh, little bleepy things, when a metalized particulate can do exactly the same thing? And you don't have to have a factory to make it. It just comes out of the exhaust port of a jet turbine. It, it, it's so smart. Okay, smart, smart technology, smart meters, smart cars. What does smart mean? Secret militarized armaments in residential technology. Mark and Sasha's worlds are one of constant peril. Danger lurks around every corner. Seemingly harmless phenomena, such as an aircraft flying a mile above your head, are actually dangerous emitters of micro-metallized particulates, each of which has the potential to track you and reveal your location to a big government that is out of control. But that danger is a mere minnow compared to the real danger, the shark of all dangers. And I'm talking, of course, about the 5G base stations, the towers that are the building blocks of the 5G network. Those transmitters, these are radar. It is phased array radar. Though that radar signal sweeping the countryside will kill every pollinator, every biological structure, it will sterilize livestock, it will kill the ground. 5G has the potential to wipe out literally all life on Earth. The people who have installed 5G intend to massacre literally everything, leaving the Earth a barren and rocky planet with not a single breathing, respiring thing. Not even the cockroaches which could survive a nuclear blast. It's all going to be gone. Consequently, land won't have a value. Uh, obviously, farmers will die. The community will be under attack. The community will be under attack. I think by this time, Sasha may have had enough of Mark. Because everything that Sasha Stone creates is really just about Sasha Stone. This is his show, after all. And Sasha is not about to be upstaged by an uneducated man from Gateshead. An uneducated man from Gateshead. The LED light bulbs in your home invariably contain the micro or nanotech lens flare capacitors which will receive the 5G signaling. And it will proliferate the 5G signaling everywhere. By We're now over an hour into the film and Sasha Stone's astonishing revelation that capacitors in LED bulbs have the potential to relay a deadly 5G signal, one that could wipe out all life on Earth. It doesn't sound anything more extraordinary than anything else we've heard. Uh, Sasha Stone is an accomplished master of bullshit. He's like 
Russell Brand, but without the jokes, but probably exactly the same in every other way. And uh, like Russell Brand, Sasha Stone also has a sanctimonious aspect. Here is his final address of the film. This is how he ends 5G apocalypse. High streets. Shame on the parliamentarians and international leadership whose wet ink signatures and seals of office are sanctioning and permissioning uh, the rollout of something which is uh, arguably the greatest threat to humankind. Shame. Hasn't it been another wild ride into the crazy world of Mark Steele? We've seen how he was plucked from conspiratorial obscurity into the limelight by no one other than Sasha Stone, the grand poobah of mysticism himself. And we get to decide whether Sasha Stone is a credulous nitwit who has fallen entirely for Mark Steele's implausible grift. Or is he himself a grifter who recognised that Mark Steele was somebody whose message could be exploited to make people afraid of 5G in order to sell a completely worthless device, the 5G Bioshield? Well, you decide, and while you're deciding, I shall be working on the next episode of Mind of Steel, and I'll see you in one week.